everyone welcome to my youtube channel so in this particular video we will talk about p values so we are continuing our stats playlist and uh, i believe this is one of the very vastly asked question in stats uh, you know whenever you are applying for any data science interview right because this concept is something which we will use in our data science project in order to determine that whether our null hypothesis is you know we can reject that or we fail to reject that so this is the basis fundamental so please try to understand this video until the very end and uh, then you can ask me any sort of doubts whatever you have in the comment section i will for sure respond all the comments so before getting started i hope everyone knows me but for those who are coming for the very first time so uh, i am priya bhatia and currently i am working as a data scientist uh from past few years i am a mentor of dsa and data science and uh, i have completed my masters in ai from iit hyderabad i am also one of the reliance scholar in ai and computer science for the academic year 2020 2021 so no, you can interact with me and you can just connect with me via linkedin if you have any sort of doubts apart from that you can follow me on my github as well as the current youtube channel where you are watching this video right so this is uh, the brief intro about me so now let's try to focus on the agenda that we have so let's try to understand now what is the concept of p value whenever we are talking about p value it's nothing but it's a smallest significance value which lead to rejecting the null hypothesis that we have so uh, i'll talk about this in detail what is this definition all about what we will do is that we will try to solve one numeric problem here okay i'll try to solve one numeric problem and with the help of that problem we will try to understand the concept of p value and we'll try to see that how with the help of this p value basically we will be able to determine that whether we should reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject that null hypothesis okay so let's get started with this particular problem so what they are saying suppose the abc company manufactures a product okay which have a mean weight of 20 and standard deviation of 4 so for a for any xyz company abc company they are manufacturing some product and they are saying that its mean is 20 and standard deviation is 4 so what i will do is that i'll write these numbers because i will use these numbers to solve this problem so they are saying that the value of mu the mean is something which is equals to 20 and they are saying that the value of sigma is something which is equals to 4 okay after that what they are saying they are saying that during inspection manager observes that the mean is bigger than 20 so what they are saying ki jab inspection kiya to manager ko kya pata chala ki mean jo hai wo 20 se bada hai okay now we need to conclude that whether the mean weight is 20 or bigger than 20 now by looking into this problem itself will you be able to determine that what should be the null hypothesis and what should be the alternate hypothesis that is something the very first step which we need to conclude ki null hypothesis kya hoga aur alternate hypothesis kya hoga so in this case if i will talk about null hypothesis will be that okay i am assuming that the mean is equals to 20 whatever you know uh, we are getting is tw uh, 20 is correct but alternate hypothesis says which is the uh, you know contrary of this null hypothesis that we have is that mu is not equal to 20 now we need to determine so in any experiment whatsoever you will do in stats our target is to focus on this particular null hypothesis our experiment will focus on this and our target is either after the experiment we will conclude two statements either the conclusion will be that either we will reject this null hypothesis means uh the mean is not equal to 20 it is something bigger than that as the inspection also says the same result or maybe we will fail to reject that or maybe we will fail to reject this null hypothesis these are the only two conclusions that we will be able to get how we will be able to get that's where the concept of p value came into picture okay now i will try to show you how it will happen okay so the idea is that 
if suppose i am saying that the null hypothesis is true if suppose i will say that this null hypothesis is true in that scenario if suppose in a experiment i will take a sample of that for example if i will take the number of data points as 36 so i have taken a sample data from the complete population that i have i have taken a sample data and what i did is i tried to calculate the sample mean of this which is x bar and suppose this x bar value is approximately equal to 20 is approximately equals to 20 in that scenario what should i say is this null hypothesis is true in that scenario it, it, it is false obviously it will be true right so i can say that the null hypothesis is true when i will take a sample data and for that sample data when i'm trying to calculate the sample mean it is approximately equals to 20 which is equal to the population mean but it will be false or it will be wrong when the sample mean is not approximately equals to 20 but having some value which is maybe bigger than that bigger than 20 right in that case obviously i will not say that the null hypothesis is true and i will simply reject that now suppose you have calculated the sample mean and you came out to a conclusion that your sample mean is coming out to be approximately 22 okay this is the value that you are getting after calculate, calculating the sample mean now the question is that whether you should reject the null hypothesis or you are failed to reject that how will you determine how will you say that this 22 value is is this relatively high or is it something which is acceptable that's where the concept of p-value came into picture. So, what you will try to do as the second step. So, this, the first step is to determine what is your null hypothesis and what is your alternate hypothesis. We did that. Second step is to determine the sample statistic. So, here our sample statistic is the sample mean which we determine. Now, the third step is to calculate the p-value is to calculate the p value now this p value will give me the probability the probability of null hypothesis to be true now when the value of p is higher when the value of p is bigger than the alpha what is this alpha this is the significance value this is the significance value i hope you all remember the last session where i have talked about alpha type 1 error right how much risk we can take so here what i am saying is if the probability is bigger than alpha then in that case you will for sure obviously fail to reject that null hypothesis you will for sure fail to you know reject that null hypothesis h note but the interesting part comes when your value of p the probability is so less that it will be lesser than or equal to alpha in that case you will for sure reject the null hypothesis you will for sure reject the null hypothesis and that's where we will be able to get an idea that whether we should give the acceptance or not towards the null hypothesis so our complete experiment if you will observe focused on that null hypothesis part only right now let's try to understand how we will determine the p-value okay so what you supposed to do now we supposed to see that if suppose what is the probability of having the sample statistic the sample mean bigger than or equal to you know 22 because that is what we are getting given that the population mean is equal to 20 so here we will try to calculate the z score so what we will do we will try to calculate what is the probability of z greater than equal to now how we will determine x minus xi minus mu by sigma i hope everyone remembers the z, z score formula what is xi here 22 minus what is mu 20 sigma here we're talking about sample statistic for that it will be it will be what is the sigma value sigma by square root of n so sigma is 4 which is given in my question itself and square root of n what is the sample size i hope you already have watched my previous sessions where i have discussed this formula 
so it is 36 so here this is what you're supposed to calculate this is what you're supposed to calculate now if i will show you this particular thing so it will be z greater than equal to 2 divided by 2 by 6 can i say or it will be 1 by 3 not 2 by 6 4 by 6 sorry it will be 4 by 6 right so if i'll just solve this it will be nothing but 2 by 3 so can i say that this is nothing but is equals to what is the probability of z greater than equals to 3 and this equation can be written as 1 minus what is the probability of z less than 3 now this is where z table came into picture so if you will go to the web and explore the z table this is how in the right side of my board you will be able to see the z values what i am looking for i am looking for a value 3.0 0.00 and this is the value which i will be able to get right 0 0.9987 i hope you can see if you are not able to clearly see that you can just search on the web you will be able to find out find out a z table for a positive value as well as for a negative value so it will be 1 minus 0 0.9987 so if you will solve this you will be able to get if i'll just open the calculator uh, it will be 1 minus 0. 99 i believe it will be 87 if i am not wrong yes so it will be 0 0.013 i believe i have written correctly no 0 0.0013 okay so this is what i will be able to get this is what i will be able to get to be very precise this is something which you are getting as the p value now you have to decide on the basis of this p value that whether you should accept the you know sorry reject the null hypothesis or not now you will ask me one more question that what is this value of alpha this usually defined by the you know domain expertise the problem the use case that you are trying to solve accordingly this value will be defined but usually you will observe in maximum use cases this value of alpha is 0 0.05 so considering in our problem the value of alpha as 0 0.05 now you only tell me can i say that this value of p in our case is very much lesser than the value of alpha that we are getting because in this case our value of p is 0 0.0013 but the value of alpha is 0 0.05 right so in this case what i should do can anyone tell me in this case now after under understanding the concept what i should do obviously i will reject the null hypothesis by saying reject, rejecting the null hypothesis means anyhow i am favoring the alternate one it means that the value of mu is not equal to 20 after doing this experiment and that's where the concept of p value came into picture so what is this p value you came to know as a conclusion as a note what you will say if someone will ask you what this p value indicates you can simply say that p value is nothing but p value indicates the probability probability of you know accepting or you can say what is the probability of you know uh, rejecting rejection or exception exception the null hypothesis so basically we are focusing here on the probability part and if this probability is less than or equal to alpha in that case what we will do is we will simply because in that case p value is very very low right we will simply reject the null hypothesis otherwise we will fail to reject that i hope i am making sense to everyone so here what steps we have followed in a nutshell if i will show you on the PPT part. So, what is the conclusion here? The conclusion is that mean weight is not 20. That's where I will conclude this. So, what is the steps we have followed? First of all, we check the conditions which are required to run the selected test. And here in our example, the condition is the mean value, whether it should be equal to 20 or it is not equal to 20. Then we select the hypothesis what is null, what is alternate. Second thing is, we check the significance level. We have decided that value as 0 0.05 as of now. Third part, we compute the test statistic value, which is X bar in our case. 
fourth step we compute the p value which is 0.0013 in our case fifth step is to determine that whether this value is less than equal to alpha or bigger than that in our case it is less than that so that's why we reject the null hypothesis otherwise we fail to reject that and finally i stated the conclusion that the value of mu is not equal to 20 this is how basically the computation will happen to solve any kind of problem whichever you will feel like in future you can just now go and do your own research after listening this video that how basically we will uh, p value will help us determine that whether we should reject the null hypothesis or not right so this is all about today's session i hope that you really find this video insightful if you still have any sort of doubt please do mention in the comment section i will try to respond to you all if you don't have any doubt what you're supposed to do is just hit like button right share this video with each and everyone whosoever need this kind of concepts and do subscribe to my channel it will really help me to reach to a wider audience with this bye bye everyone happy learning to all and i'll see you all in my next upcoming videos